On the original Oddity, when you wanted to use any pulse width modulation, you were tied into the instrument's single LFO speed. With Oddity 2 though, we have options thanks to the XLFO. For this tutorial, we're going to ignore the sub oscillator because the only waveforms that you can assign to this are a 50% square wave or a sawtooth. So let's start with oscillator 1 and you'll see the pulse width controls are clearly evident. With a square wave assigned in the audio mixer section here, we can move the pulse width slider and hear the difference this has. Here's our 50% right up to a narrow pulse. When we introduce pulse width modulation, the speed or rate is governed by the main LFO like so. Okay, let's settle on a less over the top setting using this main LFO speed and the mod depth like so. That's pretty beefy. So we're gonna keep that for a moment, but just for now, let's turn down oscillator one and turn up oscillator two in the knowledge that the limitation with a single LFO means that if we want to apply the same to oscillator two, it'll be at the same rate or speed as we've already applied to oscillator one. Or it was on original oddity because here, by clicking on the actual pulse width slider of oscillator two, and then clicking on the XLFO amplitude and turning it up, we assign a totally independent LFO with a choice of waveforms, depth and all the other functions that the XLFO affords. Let's go with this for a moment and then go and reintroduce oscillator 1 into the audio mixer again. And now we have our two oscillators modulating at different rates and depths. Now, let's add our sub oscillator, obviously with no pulse width applied, and drop the tuning an octave. And that's just from a basic default sound. If we want, we could get rid of the main LFO supplying the pulse width mod on oscillator one, Place it with yet another XLFO with its own settings. main LFO for modulating filter carve, etc, etc. 